Time is an essence. They hear it in our message. You have revealed to us the blessing that comes after the testing. Told our y'all. Told our y'all. We are waiting on the exodus. Praying for the rest of us. It shall be greater than the first. For the captivity is the worst. Come by here, y'all. You are a strong tower. For we know not the hour. You are our power. Enemies you devour. Come by here, y'all. In a time of darkness, the world is heartless. Missing kids on car. Who would have thought this? Come by here, y'all. You are in control. You got the nations on hold. The wicked must fold. The story is told from the times of old. Y'all cold got next. You can find us in a text. We're the apple of your eye. to consume us but we did not die come by here y'all come by here y'all come by here y'all it's what we cry you're the Elohim of our father from on high hallelujah 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 you save your people I've 
Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, the household of Israel, grace and peace to you all. I want to welcome everyone on the Set Apart Day for Set Apart People. We're excited to have the mission here, and we um, endeavor to continue to share this good news with those who are around us. Hallelujah. We have a few more people that are joining in. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started in the name of Yah and our only Hamashiach, hallelujah. 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 We sound the trumpet in Zion. We call for a solemn assembly. Hallelujah. On this Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom to each and every one of you. Uh, we're still waiting for uh, Moray Oladella to join us. Uh, but in the meantime, I am Moray Vaughn Parker here in Orlando. And we're just so glad to have you, Mishpaka, with us for this time of fellowship. The set apart time for Yah's set apart people. We're I'm endeavoring to continue to echo the call of Yehokanah, which is come out of her, my people. We want to wake up the house of Israel and we want to extend the light of the gospel um, to the Gentiles and those who will hear this great call. Uh, we're so glad to be with you. There's a lot going on in and around us and we continue to ask for continued prayer for those who are still dealing with coronavirus, the numbers are rising. 
And we also pray for those who are being affected by this tropical storm in the islands. And we just continue to pray overall for the body of Mashiach, for the citizens of this great kingdom. And we want to let you know that we have a heart for family and the community. Uh, that is something that we are pressed to do as the children of the Most High. So with the Great Awakening Assembly, uh, we have assemblies um, throughout the United States. And I'll just share with you briefly some of that information here. Are you looking for a Torah observant, messianic spirit filled Great Awakening Assembly near you? These are our current locations. Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana, Flint, Michigan, Detroit East, Detroit West, Durham, North Carolina, Orlando, Florida, Nassau, Bahamas. And there will soon be a Great Awakening Assembly in the following locations. Phoenix, Arizona, Las Vegas, Nevada, Odessa, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Lansing, Michigan, Flushing, Michigan, Lithonia, Georgia, Madison, Wisconsin, San Diego, California, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Edmond, Oklahoma. For more information, please go to our website at greathebrewawakening.org. Hallelujah. So we are growing and moving out into the highways and the hedges to share this good news to compel men, women, and children uh, to come to the kingdom. Hallelujah. So we have Maury Oladeli, who is joining us now. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome to each and every one again, and to our beloved Maury Oladeli. Uh, we welcome him to uh, the Zoom. And Maury, we're just going to ask you if you are able to go through our About Us. Um, let me um, get the information here. Can everyone see the screen? Okay, all right, let me. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, all right, so Moriola Deli. All right, look like Moray's um, still working on getting in. All right, so just to um, go over our about us, we are a Torah. Torah-based, spirit-filled, awakened assembly. Uh, we actively teach the Hebrew foundations of the faith. Uh, singing, preaching, prayer, prophecy, special music, and familiar songs are a part of our worship. Our mission includes spreading the gospel, the Besora, the good news of the kingdom and of Yahusha, uh, who the world called Jesus, uh, the only brought forth son of Yahuwah, our Elohim. Hallelujah. Our disclaimer, the teachings of our assembly may not represent those of the broader Israelite community, camps, congregations, or assemblies. Common English terms such as God, Lord, Jesus, and Christ may be used in place of the original Hebrew or Aramaic for the purpose of relatability. We do not teach heritage for the purpose of hate. We teach heritage to educate and restore the scattered children of Israel back to their Hebrew culture of obeying the laws, statutes, and commandments through faith in Yeshua HaMashiach. The nations who hear the gospel and cleave to Israel are grafted in and counted as the commonwealth of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, truly, we are, we are so um, privileged that you consider um, joining our Shabbat Fellowship today. Uh, Moriola Deli, are, are you? Shalom, shalom. Shalom, 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 and welcome to Moriola Deli. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, Mori, I'm just going to ask you to take it from here um, to open in prayer. Um, call upon anyone who may have a song of praise. Um, share with us um, 
a word from the, the, the scriptures as well as um, an exhortation. Uh, we'll have my wife sing the Shema and then we'll jump into today's lesson. Hallelujah. 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 Over to you, Lord. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we come before you according to the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, renewed in the Brit Hadashah by Yahusha. Father, we humbly come before you, and we ask that you lead us in your word today, Father. We ask that you open up our minds, open up our hearts, open up our spirits, Father, to receive the living word, Father. Father, we give you all the glory, we give you all the praise, we give you all the thanks and the honor. Father, I ask that you visit each and every one of us individually and have a one-on-one -on -one with each and every one of us, Father, as you, as you continue to redeem us, as you continue to prepare us, as you continue to lead us, for you are our shepherd. Father, we give you all the glory, we give you all the praise and thanks. And I ask, Father, that you reach each and every one of us in whatever situation we may be dealing with currently, Father, I ask that you reach out and help us, Father, for you are our help, our fortress, our high tower, and our deliverer. Father, we give you all the glory and praise. We put this service into your hand. We put this Shabbat into your hand as it is ordained before the foundations of the world. Father, we give you praise and thanks. Let your will be done in our lives. In the name and the blood of Yahushua Hamashiach. I'm hearing a background noise. It's kind of heavy. Okay. Well, uh, for today's uh, exhortation, the word is trust Yahuwah and his word. We are never alone. In Psalms 138 and 2, it reads, I will, worship to, I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise the name, thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. This we need to make, we need to make this personal. We need to gravitate to the word of Yah, claim the word and redeem the time. In Deuteronomy 38 and 1, it says, it is Yahuwah who goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Whatever circumstances or situations or challenges we are facing, trust his word. Trust his word. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is Yahuwah, your Elohim, who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Brothers and sisters, we are never alone. All the challenges, all the stripes, all the battles, we are never alone. He's always with us. In Joshua 1 and 9, it, it reads, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For Yahweh, your Elohim, is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 and 5 says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as with Moses, I will be with you. I will, leave, I will not leave you or forsake you. Aren't we the covenant people? Speak to him through the covenant. Remind him of his covenant. In Psalms, in, in Psalms 91 and 11, it reads, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Least thou dash thy feet against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon, thou shalt tread on the feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he had known my name. Not only has the Most High promised that he's going to be with us, he's going to help us, he's going to strengthen us, but he also has given his angels charge over us to keep us in our ways. In Psalms 34 and 7, it says, The angel of Yahweh encamped around them that fear him and deliver them. In context of addressing and claiming the promises of God, which resides in the word, the laws and commandments, the scriptures read, bless Yahweh, he is angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. When we pray, when we petition the most high, 
use his word because the assistance that is there for us, as the scripture says here, bless Yahuwah, he is angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments. So when we speak the word of God, the angels are there to do and to follow the commandments of the Most High. We are covered, brothers and sisters, we need to speak his word and come into agreement with his word. And finally, so I admonish you on this Sabbath day as I seek to persuade you and to urge you as I appeal to you. Proverbs 3 and 5 reads, Trust in Yahweh with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. As it is written, so let it be done. Word. Shema time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sorry about that. Again, feedback here. Back here. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to have to do this over here. <laughs> In you, Yahua, eh. Shema Israel, Shema Israel, Yahuwah Elohim, you Yahuwah, Eha, Shema Israel, Shema Israel, Yahuwah. Shema, you say Israel. Shema, Israel. Shema, Israel. Shema, Israel. Shema, Israel. Shema, Israel. Say Shema. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah, your Elohim, is one. And we're so glad today that we're gathered here in a spirit of oneness and brotherly love uh, to break bread and to see what the Most High has for us, his people. Well, today uh, we will dive into um, what the lesson is about. Hallelujah. And we want to spend some time expanding on the message that we started with um, a few weeks ago, talking about the kingdom, understanding the kingdom. So in week one or the first week, uh, we spoke about uh, what the kingdom entails, that it entails a king, territory, uh, people, laws, statutes, and commandments. It encompasses a covenant, encompasses a constitution. And we talked in depth about different aspects of who the king was, that Yahushua HaMashiach is the king. And I know that's uh, problematic for a lot of people um, in acknowledging who the king is, but Yah who owns everything made him king. Hallelujah. And then last week we talked about the kingdom of darkness, who is the ruler of that kingdom, who is Hasatan. 
and how both kingdoms are in opposition of one another. So if you are a king in the kingdom of Yah and Yahusha is your king, then by default, your enemies of the kingdom of darkness. So when we go through a lot of things in our personal life, we know that uh, the kingdom of darkness seeks to oppose those who are in the kingdom of light. And we're so grateful that we have that understanding. And today we want to dig a little bit deeper. I want you to understand that today is going to be hot and heavy. We're going hard today. The first two weeks, we were just setting the foundation. This week, we're we going all in. No holds bar. We, we, we're, we're going in. Uh, it's going to be a dogfight. A lot of people are going to be upset. A lot of people are going to be angry. A lot of people are going to be frustrated. I want those of you who are listening via Facebook, share this with your family, share this with your friends. They will have to answer some questions if they're not in the kingdom of Yahuwah, if they are in Christendom, which that kingdom is ran by the papacy. And we, we, we can get into that further on down, but we want to talk about the king today and when he returns, what will happen? So brothers and sisters uh, of the household of Israel, uh, we'll have a lot of passages to read. I'll call up on some of you to read just to kind of give you some insight. When you see the, the, the passages with red text, those are the ones where I'll ask people to read. So just prepare your hearts and your minds to read today. Get some paper, get some pens, pencils, drawing board, whatever it is. We're going to go through a lot today. We're going to challenge a lot of dogma. We're going to debunk a lot of false doctrine. We're going to crush a lot of fantasies that are perpetuated through the religious construct of colonial Western, Western Christianity. Uh, it's going to make some folks mad. And if you want, you can ask your pastor, friends, family to help answer some of these questions because it is important. So let's jump on in hallelujah the return of the king the return of the king so let's go the over overview of the kingdom overview of the kingdom the return of the king hallelujah what did the king say about his return so one of the things that uh, perplex a lot of people as they study the scriptures and many have taken it upon themselves within the Israelite community to debunk the fact that Yahusha is king and they will go to the, the extent to say well if he's king um, is he coming back or, or they may say well we're still looking for the king to come but I want to share with you that the king is coming back he's coming again and the language of the scriptures can sometimes be a bit um foreign to those who do not go into the etymology they don't go into lexicons they don't look at the original language they only take the king james version at face value and it has tripped up a lot of people but what i want to ensure you is that the king is coming back the king is going to return but let's see what he says regarding his return. And today we're going to establish precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. We need two or three witnesses to look at these passages and to say, does the, the, the scriptures agree? Do we find any discrepancy among what the king said, what the prophets said, and what the apostles said? We're going to look to see if we have agreement in the Besorah, in, in among the Gospels. So let's see what the king said first of all. Yahusha answered, my kingdom. So he's telling you right there that he does have a kingdom and that he's king. Is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to pre prevent my arrest by the Jews or the Yahudim. But now my kingdom is not of this realm. So the king says, I have a kingdom that is not of this realm. I mean, it's influence, uh, it, it's authority. 
Oh, hallelujah. If, if you miss week one and two, you may have to go back and try to find those. His authority is not of this world, meaning it's not given to him by men because the way that the kingship work in the earth realm, as we think about uh, nations and empires, it was passed on. So the king would anoint someone who would be their successor. What Yahusha is saying is no earthly king passed this on to me. This came to me from the king which is in heaven, who is Yah, who've made me king under him. And he has given me this kingdom. But it's not of this realm. Its influence is not of this realm. Its laws are not of this realm. Hallelujah. Its constitution is not of this realm. It's a heavenly constitution. That's why he, when he prayed, he says, your will be done on earth as it is in the Shamaim or in heaven. Then he talks about him coming back. He says, in my father's house are many rooms. Some translations say many mansions. Say, if it were not so, would I have told you that I am going away to prepare a place for you? Catch this. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back. I want to just say that again. He says, if I go, I'm coming back. And I'm coming back to welcome you into my presence so that you also may be where I am. John 14, 2 to 3. Again, y'all may need to write some of this down because many people are becoming discouraged in this in the land of our captivity and they say well when is the king coming back don't worry he is coming back he is coming back uh he says also in matthew chapter 24 30 then will appear in heaven the sign of the son of man and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory matthew 16 27 for the son of man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his father. And then he will repay each person according to what he has done. So for some people who, who subscribe to the two Mashiach model where uh, there is Yeshua or Yahusha HaMashiach Ben uh, Dawid or Yeshua ben Yosef. Some say, well, uh, the first uh, appearance or the first time he came, he came as Yeshua ben Yosef, meaning uh, he was a the suffering servant. Hallelujah. I'm trying to just keep it light, brothers and sisters, because there's so much we can dive into. But as we continue to fellowship, we're going to dig in and we're going to dive into this thing. As we, as we continue to, to look at you know, what he said going into uh, the prophets. So we understand that he says he will return. That is what the king said. We understand that as many people who uh, may find it uncomfortable to deal with the fact that his first coming, he was a king, but many believe that he was the suffering king uh, because he had to fulfill the role of being a priestly king after the order of Malik Zadik, Melchizedek, who was both priest and king. So Yahusha is both priest and king. His first coming was to fulfill the priestly portion of his kingship where he atoned for the sins of the nation by giving himself as a ransom. And a lot of people, they're uncomfortable with that, but we can deal with that a little later on. Now, the next time he comes, he's coming as uh, Yahusha ben Dawid, which is the king that rules and reign in the earth, in the Eretz. But let's not take just what Yahusha said about it. Let's see what the prophet said. See, a lot of folks, what they want to do, they want to put the Old Testament against the New Testament. And to say, oh, the Old Testament is done away with. But let's see what the Old Test, the so-called Old Testament, the Tanakh, the writings of the prophets. Let's see what they said about the king who will come. Daniel chapter 2, 44 says, And in the days of these kings, the Elohim of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. 
and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all the kingdoms that it shall stand and it shall stand forever. Let's look at what Daniel continues to say. The kingdom of Yahuwah will be a literal kingdom ruling over the whole earth. Daniel 7, 14 states, and he was given dominion, glory, and kingship so that every people, nation, and language should serve him. So in the first time the king came as the priestly king, not all languages, not all nations, not everyone was subject to serving him. But when he comes the second time, when the king returns, his dominion will be everlasting. It will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. It will be a literal earthly kingdom where he will rule over the nations of the earth. So for those who uh, want to just look at the king as, oh, this little, little, little baby Jesus on Christmas, a uh, little blonde here, blue-eyed baby, and we sing all these songs, oh, away in a manger. Uh, we sing, oh, silent night. Oh, we sing these songs because in our mind, we, we have created a false image of a king who's just a little cuddly, nice little baby. Or we look at those pictures given to us by Europeans where he's leaning to the side and he got his hair just done so wonderfully and his makeup is nice. He got some nice blue contacts and look like he can't hurt nobody. When the king comes back, he's coming to rule. He's going to have dominion and everyone will serve him. Oh, let's go deeper. Let's dive a little bit deeper. Let's see what Isaiah said. We already heard from Daniel in the mouth of two or three witness. Let what? every word be established. Isaiah says, speaking of the future reign of Messiah, describes what kind of rule he will be, what kind of ruler he will be. The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And listen to this, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. So the world powers that we see, and for those who see the intro poster, you know, we had Babylon standing, we had the Egyptians to one side, and we had different uh, iconography as represented by uh, Daniel in his vision. And then we had the Hamashiach right in the middle, standing right above the Bible or the scriptures or uh, the Holy Word. Why is that? Because his government will dominate every other world government. When the king returns, his government will not be in league with other governments. It will not be like the United Nations where they, they get to negotiate. They sit back and they, they have peace talks and they negotiate. It's not about which country is going to send aid to which country. When the king returns, his government will be supreme. It's whatever he says, that's what will be the rule of the day. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen, Revelation 1, 3. So now we're looking at what did the apostles say. So first we looked at what the king said. He said he's coming back with clouds and with his angels. Then we saw what the prophet said. The prophet said that, oh, yes, he's coming back, and he's coming back to rule. Now, let's see what the apostles said. Now we have three witnesses. Oh, to those who have a problem with this, whether you're in the Hebrew community or in the Christian community, whether you're in the Islamic community, you're Buddhist or atheist or agnostic, let's deal with this. We have three witnesses over millennials 
who are corroborating to say the same thing. So John writes here as he sees the vision said, behold, he cometh with clouds. It's the same language consistently over and over. First John 2, 28, let's see what John the beloved apostle said. Now, little children, abide in him so that when he, he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. So John is telling his audience, his Hebrew audience, if you understand, uh, which epistles were written to which group, we know that John, we know that James, we know that Peter primarily wrote to the children of Israel who were dispersed, while it is said that uh, Rav Shaul wrote primarily to the Gentiles. That's what they said, but we know for sure that John wrote, John, James, and Peter wrote primarily to the children of Israel, and he's reminding the dispersed that the king is coming again. Hallelujah. Now concerning the times and the season, brothers, you have not no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of Yahuwah will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security. And you know, people are saying, oh, we just need a better president. Uh, keep wishing. Y'all only had, what, 44, 45? And they couldn't fix um, the, the sin sick state of humanity, the sin, the sin sick state of this nation. Do you think a president going to solve the problems of the world, solve the problems of the United States? And suddenly destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. That's again, Rav Shaul writing, the beloved apostle uh, Paul, who some love to run to, to debunk what the prophets said. Paul is telling his audience that the king is coming. There's a false security that the children of Israel have attached themselves to, where we want the government to give us all the answers. We want the government to give us all the solutions. But I'm telling you that we have a king already who is going to come and he will have all the solutions to the world problems. And they won't have a choice. They won't have a choice to vote on it. Second Peter, let's see what uh, Kepha said. Let's see what Kepha said. 2 Peter 1, 16, for we did not follow cleverly devised myths. This is not something we made up. This is not something we had a dream about. This is not something we had a vision about. This is not something we came up with based on private interpretation. This is not something we learned in seminary. When we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We seen this thing. We heard this testimony. This is not something we coming up with. This bigger than Josephus. Come on, y'all better talk back to me. This is bigger than Tacitus. This is bigger than some of these other so-called historians. Oh, y'all listening to those Greek historians. Oh, y'all listening to Josephus. The apostles said that we were eyewitnesses of this thing. We saw this. We saw the Hamashiach. We heard what the Hamashiach said. We're not making this stuff up. We didn't go down to Mary Martha's house and, you know, wrote something on a piece of paper and said, we going to carry this to Jerusalem. We seen this thing. Whose report are you going to believe? I will believe the report of the apostles and the prophets and the, uh, and, and the Hamashiach himself. That's whose report I'm going to believe. Why? Because in the mouth of two or three witness, let every word be established. Hallelujah. So let's look at the king's rulership. So we talk about him coming back, but let's talk about what going to happen when he's ruling, because this is what's going to make a whole lot of people uncomfortable when the king comes back and he's ruling. Let's look at it. Yahusha will rule as the perfect theocratic. His government will be heavenly. His laws, his statutes, his commandments, his mandates, his policies. Ah, check this out. 
his cabinet, the judicial branch, will get their mandate from heaven. He will rule as a dictator. So for those who are uncomfortable with following direction now, when the king come back, oh, you really going to have a problem. Because it's whatever the, 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 the king says that will go. He will rule with complete and absolute power over the entire world, not just Jerusalem, not just that strip over there called the Middle East. The entire world will be under his rulership. So brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask somebody, one of the brothers, grab Micah chapter 4, 2 to 3, and read that for me. And the many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahuwah and to the house of Yahuwah of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his path for the law shall go forth from Zion and the word of Yahuwah from Jerusalem. Say what? The, what will go out from Zion? The law? Oh no, uh, Mori Oladeli. Yes. The law been done away with you see because... Uh, the Jesus that I serve nailed that to the cross. If that is indeed the case, Mishpaka, why is he coming back? Nations will go up before him and the Torah will come out of Zion. I need some pastors to answer this question for me. If the law is done away with, then what law will Hamashiach have come out of Zion to govern the nations? Somebody's been lying. You telling me that he came to do away with the law, and then when he come back, he going to bring it back with him. That sounds like a confused Messiah to me. But that's the Messiah that they have painted and given to us. So all oh, the laws are done away with. But when he comes back, he's coming back to bring forth the law. Somebody read Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratat, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall be come forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Hallelujah. The ruler of the world will come from the land that was prophesied about, Bethlehem. We understand that the king's rulership is unchallengeable and have a lot of passages here. For those who are writing it down, write it down. If you're taking a screenshot, take a screenshot because this is important to understand that when the, king's, when the king return, what kind of rulership will he have in place? See, it's not gonna be a democratic rulership where you get to vote. It's a theocratic rulership where whatever it's written in the Torah as given by the Most High, that's what it's going to go by. Oh, my, 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 my. Let's move on. Yahushua's administration of justice, he will rule with a rod of iron. What will he rule with, Mishpaka? A rod of iron. In the courts will ensure accurate verdicts and fair sentence. And we have a lot of passages here. Yahushua's perfect government will include capital punishment. Oh my goodness. Oh, this loving God that uh, they give us, they used to give us on Sunday morning that just love everybody. And oh my God, you know, he would not uh, cause any harm to come into anyone. And he just so loving. And I, I just can't see my God sending anybody to hell because he's just a God of love. This same Elohim of love go institute capital punishment? Come on, brothers and sisters, let's dive in. Yashiyahu or Isaiah chapter 2, 2 to 4. Somebody read that for me. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. 
and many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he I shall do, judge yeah. among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 66, 16 to 24. Let's hit it. For by fire and by his word will Yahuwah plead with all flesh, and the slain of the, of the Yahuwah shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in, themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith Yahuwah. <clears throat> For I know their works and their thoughts, it shall come. But I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarshish, to Pul, to Lud, and draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the, to the isles afar off, that they have heard my fame, neither have seen my glory and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren from an offering unto Yahuwah out of all the nations upon the horses and in the chariots, chariots and in the litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith Yahuwah, as, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of Yahuwah. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith Yahuwah. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith Yahuwah, so shall, thy, so, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, Said Yahuwah, and from one Sabbath to another, from one all flesh shall come and worship before me, said Yahuwah. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of men that have transgressed against me, for their for their worm will not shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be a, a boring unto all flesh, said Yahuwah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's park right there. For a few minutes. Glory be to the Most High Yah and to His only begotten Son, Yehoshua HaMashiach. When we think about the government of Yeshua and His rulership, we have to understand it within the context of the body of scriptures. We can't just run off and pull one verse here and two verse here. This is why we have so many posted for you to go back and read in your spare time. Why? Because we have been indoctrinated through Western colonial Christianity to accept a lie. What is the lie? The lie is that we serve a good and a wonderful God who just want us to love him. And you ain't got to keep no laws, no statutes and commandments because he did away with that. Where is the lie? The lie comes into place where we are now reading that when the king return, that he will not only require everybody to keep the law, but if you don't keep the law, you will be punished. So for all the pork eaters, the shrimp eaters, the crab eaters, the eaters of those who uh, transgress the, the, the covenant, by doing what you want to do, you go to these buffets and you order whatever you want to order. Uh, the king said when he returned, and if you want to get the precept of what time period he's talking about, you got to go to Isaiah chapter 60. This is a future, it's called a messianic age prophecy. So he's talking about the time which will come when the king will rule. He said that if you running around here, 
sanctifying yourself saying, oh, I'm, I'm making myself holy because that's what the bylaws and the church traditions have done. They have set parameters that you can use to make yourself holy. If you dress a certain way, that means you're holy. If you don't wear no makeup or jewelry, that makes you holy. If you don't go to certain places, that makes you holy. But what the king says makes you holy is keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments. So when we think about the dietary laws, you can run around here and do what you want to do as much as you want to eat what you want to eat because you're big, bad, and grown. But I guarantee you when the king comes back, you ain't going to be able to do that. Because if you say that my pastor say, and you run around eating swine's flesh, the king going to punish you. The king is going to punish you. If you can find that verse, read it again for me, Maury Oladeli. The verse about they that sanctify themselves and go behind the trees to eat swine's flesh. Yes, I got it. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree, in the midst eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith Yahuwah. You're going to be consumed together. So if he going to consume you now, then what about now? If the king going to consume you then, what about now? See, because the law ain't went nowhere. So there, that's the lie you need to ask your pastor about. That's the lie you need to ask your bishop about. That's the lie you need to ask the apostle about. Why will Yehoshua, or as you say, Jesus, punish those who are eating swine's flesh when he returns if the dietary laws are done away with? As a matter of fact, he says, all manner of abomination which you can only find in the uh, in Torah, in Leviticus, when it talks about the dietary laws. Those are the abominations that you're not supposed to eat. And if you want to be big, bad, and bold and go against the king, he going to consume you. Oh, my, 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 my. I guarantee you, you didn't hear that on Sunday morning. I guarantee you, you probably didn't hear that in a revival. I guarantee you, you probably never heard that in a convention, but this is what the Most High said. And further on down, he says, from one new moon to the next and from one Sabbath day to the next, all flesh will have to worship him. So you can run around here if you want to talk about it don't matter what day you worship God. God want to be worshiped every day. See, because my Jesus, you know, he don't put no distinction between day. Somebody lied to you because he said, from one Shabbat to the next, all flesh will come and worship him. So if you're going to have to worship him during the time when he returns, what about now? What, what, what about now? Your pastor, your leader, your bishop, your moray, the ones you listen to on YouTube, the ones you listen to on Facebook, may need to answer some of these questions for you. When the king returns, why will he mandate for those to worship him on new moon days and on Shab uh, and Sabbath days. And he says, if you don't, he will look upon your carcass, which will rot with worms, meaning his government, his rulership. He's ruling with a rod of iron. It's not playtime anymore. Hallelujah. Somebody read Jeremiah chapter 23, five to six for me. Jeremiah 23. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Ooh, you're talking about grace. Talking about grace. Oh, we got grace. Grace is not an occasion for sin. So when the king returns, because he will be ruling physically, he's going to execute judgment immediately. And you're still going to have people who don't want to repent. Just like you have people now will hear this message and not repent. They're going to go back and say, well, I don't care what this brother on, on here talking about. You know, I'm going to church on Sunday and I'm going to eat what I want to eat. These are some of the people who will be during the millennial reign, the thousand year reign, 
who will do the same thing and will be consumed. We're trying to issue a warning now to, pre to prevent that from happening, to say, hey, listen to the king. Follow the constitution of the kingdom. But just like um, common Israelites, we're going to say, no, I will not hearken. I, I don't want to hear that. Well, it's going to be a day of reckoning because when the king comes back, whether or not you want to hear it, you're going to get cut down. Israel, listen to this. You think it's bad now that our people getting shot down in the streets? When the king returns, he's going to cut down every disobedient man, boy, woman, and child in the same manner. He's slinging that sword and he's sparing no life. So if you think the vengeance that we're seeing against our people now is cruel, you ain't going to be able to protest. I would love to see you protest the king. <laughs> Having your signs and your cardboard signs going out there protesting the king. I'd love to see that when he comes back. Because his justice and his judgment is unchallengeable. And we're going to dig into um, those who will want to challenge him and see what happens to them. King's rulership, the Messiah, is the ultimate sovereign in the coming kingdom exercising ultimate control as judge, lawgiver, and king. <laughs> he is the judge, he is the jury, and he's the executioner. You will have no one to plead your case if you disobey the king when he returns. And that's script. We just read through all of that. If you want a PowerPoint, I'll send it to you. Names expressing his authority, branch, the Lord, our righteousness, the rod of justice, son of man, king, judge, lawgiver, king of kings and lord of lords. He'll be recognized as shepherd, the light, the stone, the redeemer, son of righteousness, son of Dawid. Under his rulership, and this is where it even gets more interesting for those who have a problem with ethnicity and national identity. I see it all the time over Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Oh, ethnicity don't matter. Color don't matter. Race don't matter. And we have all this uh, that we've mashed up into one to come up with this ideology that y'all don't care about Israel because it ain't about a people group. It's about everybody. Well, I come to burst your bubble today on this Shabbat. It's not about everybody. The Most High has a set-apart people for a set-apart purpose, and those who will join themselves to Israel will be a recipient of Yah's salvation. What are you being rescued from? The punishment that he will pour out on those who are disobedient. So the, dis the righteous and the unrighteous cannot dwell together in the manner in which some of you perpetuate. Oh, let's all hold hands and go protest. It's not going to work like that. So when we think about Israel being restored, let's look at it. The restoration of Israel as a people to the promised land is a prominent subject in Bible prophecy. And you can't change that, Mr. Theologian. I don't care how many PhDs you have in theology, uh, demonology, numerology, Christology, doctrine. I don't care what university you lecture at. I don't care if you're the dean and chief professor at any seminary. You can't change that with your new theology talking about, oh, that's been fulfilled in the church. That's one of the lies they tell in seminary. I have the books. I have the material. I've taken the quiz. I've taken the courses. Israel's prophecy has been fulfilled in the church. We're going to deal with church um, over the next few broadcasts because what we understand as church is not what the scripture on this, um, gives an understanding about church. Church in scripture is a body of believers, the congregation of Israel. Church in our day and time is a building with a pastor and different leaders of auxiliaries and people come in. That's not church according to the Bible. But we'll deal with that at another time. But these lying professors and pastors, popes and bishops, and prelates and evangelists and Sunday school teachers will tell you because they're reading from the same material that's been concocted to keep us in darkness to tell us that Israel's prophecies were fulfilled in the church. There are biblical prophecies 
about Israel, a people group that has not yet been fulfilled. And if you want to know uh, how dogmatic and how demonic and how diabolic this system is against us, let you speak up about being Israel and see what happens. But oh, when the king returns, you can proclaim who you are. And they can't block you on no Twitter, Facebook. They can't shut down your YouTube page because we are under the rulership of the king at that time. And whatever the king says, that's what goes. Complete full, full fulfillment of these predictions have never taken place up to the present time. What are we going to do with 1948? If... These prophecies have not yet come to pass. So there is yet a people that's been scattered. Oh, let me not jump ahead of myself. Come on, mores and readers. Somebody read Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11 to 12. We're going hot and heavy on this Shabbat. And it, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Most High shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. From the four corners of the earth this prophecy has not been fulfilled as of yet. Whatever occurred in 1948, the prophecies are much more deeper than just one people group so-called coming from Europe. And for the Christian church, they put the cap on it and they say, oh yes, that's it. This prophecy has been fulfilled. You're telling a lie. Yah says that he will stretch forth his hand a second time and gather the children of Israel from the four corners of the earth, not just from Europe. I don't know, Facebook may shut this down. We'll still keep it rolling. Somebody read Jeremiah chapter 32, 36 to 40. And now therefore thus saith Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel concerning this city, whereof he say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, by the sword, and by famine, and by pestilence. Somebody read Ezekiel chapter 28, 25 to 26. Drink. Thus saith the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and shall be sanctified in them, in the sight of the heathen, then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. And they shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses and a plant and vineyard. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them around about them. And they shall know that I am the Most High, Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So based on the prophecies, when we are regathered into the land, it will be a time of peace. Our enemies will be punished. We will be able to prosper. We ain't got to worry about no war. We can see right now that in this present day, uh, the inhabitants of the land are not at peace. They're always um, in conflict with the Palestinians, always in conflict with other neighboring nations. So we have to take a step back and ask some questions. Have these prophecies been fulfilled as of yet? The answer is emphatically no. Somebody read Micah chapter 4, 6 to 7. In that day, say Yahweh, I will assemble her that halted and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. Hallelujah. Uh, the regathering of Israel is pivotal. And the king, when he returns, he will restore the house of Israel. So this is to encourage those of us who are in the diaspora, the diaspora. We've been scattered throughout. Our redemption will come when the king returns. 
Why am I saying that? Uh, we, we can protest, we can march, we can put elected officials up as much as possible, but when will our redemption come? When the king returns. Under his rulership, because when he comes, and all eyes shall behold him, he says at that time, he'll gather the scattered. So we have to make sure that we understand the time frame that we're in, that in this awakening, it's important for Israel to know who they are so that when the king comes, they're already prepared to be regathered. Stop telling people that I, ethnicity don't matter and identity don't matter. Only when it comes to melanated people, it don't matter. But everybody else, every other people group can know their history, their heritage, their ancestry, but not us. Let's move on. During the millennial, Israel will be the most powerful and prominent nation in the world. It will be the ultimate superpower. Many verses specifically teach that all other nations, Egypt, Assyria, will be subordinate to Israel. Here is where it gets complicated and convoluted for people who want to deny ethnicity. Somebody read Isaiah chapter 14, 1 to 2 for me. For the Most High will have mercy on Yaqub and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Yaqub and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Most High with servants and handmaids and they shall take them captive whose captives they were and they shall rule them over their oppressors. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. What you say, the head that we see now will become the tail, and the tail will become the head. Those who are on the, on the bottom now will be on top, and those who are on top now will be on the, uh, on the bottom. Say it ain't so. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, say it ain't so, but this is what the, 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 the scriptures say. I'm not making this stuff up. I haven't met with these brothers and coerced them or, 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 or try to manipulate them to read something that's not in the book. You got it for yourself. You can read it. Israel will be on top and the other nations will be subservient to Israel. I know the language seems hard and harsh, and, and in, in our minds, it seems unfair that we will rule over other nations and they'll be subject to us, to serve us. I know it sounds funny because we, we've been at the bottom so long that when Yah said he's going to put us on the top, it kind of sounds funny. It sounds funny when someone's been broke all their lives, life, and then they learn that they're a millionaire now. It sounds funny, but this is what the script says. Not that the, see, see, during this period, the evil that they've done to us, we will not be able to repay in the same manner because Yah's justice and judgment will stand. And if you know Torah, you're not supposed to abuse those who, who serve under you, your servants. You're, you're not supposed to abuse them. You're not supposed to beat and, and, and rape and, and, and do all manner of evil against them. But they will serve Israel. And that's where it becomes problematic now because folks saying, oh, that's in the past. And, you know, they asked one, 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 one senator about reparations said, you can't expect the children to repay for the sins of the fathers. Let's see what the Bible says. Come on, somebody read um, Isaiah 49, 22 to 23 for me. Thus saith Yahweh, our Elohim, behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people and they shall bring thy sons in thy arms and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. And the kings shall be the nursing fathers and the queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their faces towards the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that I am Yahuwah for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 9 to 14. 
Hallelujah. While they're getting that, let me shoot. Go, go I got ahead. it. Go Surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring the sons from far. Sorry, I had my mic on you. That's Is all right, my brother. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring the sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of Yahweh, thy Elohim, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he had glorified in thee. And the sons, and the of, sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all that they, all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Most High, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Go back and read that verse that says, and the sons of them that afflict you, what will they do? They, and the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And they and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call you the city of the most high the sign of the Holy One of Israel. I'm looking for some pastors to jump on here and explain all of this. Ones who don't believe that ethnicity matter and that Israel don't matter and that Israel's been fulfilled in the church. I want you to explain these verses. I know for some people, this is hate speech. And I can tell you right now, I'm not a prophet. But a lot of what we read in the Bible here. There are different groups who will try to remove the Bible from out of society, remove preaching and teaching the scriptures. Why? Because they will deem the scriptures as hate speech. Why? Because we have this ideology. Oh, can't we all get along? We all want people. We all equal. Well, when the king returns, that's not his mandate. What are we going to do with that? When the king returns, Israel will be in rulership. The children of Israel will be in authority. And all the other nations will be subject to Israel and will pay homage to Israel, will be servants to Israel. And the sons of them that afflicted us. <laughs> they ask the question, well, we can't expect the children to pay for the crimes of their fathers. Well, that's not what the passage says here. You may need to go back and read it. Isaiah chapter 69 to 14. The sons of them that afflict you will come and serve you. It's going to be in reverse. Everything they've done to us, as far as making us subject and beneath them, they will experience that but with a measure of mercy and justice, but they're going to have to go through and see what, was, what it was like for our great-great-grandparents, our great-great-great-grandmothers to give suck to their young. What are we going to do with this when the king returns? Huh? When Israel will be the most powerful and prominent, we are people who've been crushed. We are people who've been disenfranchised. We are people who've been beaten, been stripped of our royal heritage. Yah says, I punish you, but I'm going to restore you. There is restoration for the house of Israel. All the time we've been broke, busted, and disgusted, been crushed. We've been denied opportunities after opportunities. We've been told no so many times. We thought no was a good word. But Yah said, I'm going to turn the table around. I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn it around. Let's move on here. Hallelujah. We will be unified in worship. All denominations will be done away with. Do you hear the Pentecostals? Apostolic, 
Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Catholic, Church of God in Christ, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah's Witness, all denominations will be done away with. So all your titles go ahead to go to the side if you in this kingdom. All your titles will have to go to the side. There will be unified worship in Jerusalem. Many of the same verses that teach that Jerusalem will be a world political capital also teach that it will be a worldwide center for worship. There are the passages you can write them down and read them at your convenience. But when the king returns, there will be no denomination. You can't talk about my church ain't going to fellowship with your church. You can't say my camp ain't going to fellowship with your camp. You can't say my assembly won't fellowship with your assembly. We will unify in worship. We will worship the king. Hallelujah. Ask your pastor what he going to do when he loses his position as judicial overseer. Huh? Bishop and elect the most honorable bishop so-and-so. What, what, what you going to do when you can't hold on to your title? Because when, Yah re when, when Yah's king return, there will be no denomination. There will be no church names and titles. Hallelujah. Final judgment. So when we think about the return of the king, and we're wrapping up here, we're almost done. After the thousand years, Satan will make a final attempt to fight against the king. It is amazing that during the rule of the king, you, 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 you think you'd have folks who say, well, you know, boy, this king is a good king. But because the hearts of men is wicked and evil and dark. And these are the hearts of people who now renounce and reject the covenant. So we don't want to keep no laws. We don't want to set aside no Shabbat day to acknowledge the king and to worship him, to spend time with family, uh, to have a set apart assembly. We, we, we don't want that. You have people then and you have people now who will say, uh, we want to eat what we want to eat. We want to celebrate our Christmas. We want to celebrate our Easter. And, and you know, we want to do what we want to do. The Bible says that in that day when Hasatan will be released, he will gather the nations. And they say, oh, our king is back. Because their allegiance is to the king of darkness, the kingdom of this wicked world, who the prince and the king is Hasatan. So they will hate the kingship and rulership of Hamashiach, just like they hate it now. Whatever the Hamashiach said do, they do the opposite. And still, quote unquote, they have their own version of the Hamashiach, which is a false anti-Hamashiach version. So when Hasatan is released, they're going to say, oh, our king is back. We're going to fight against um, this Yahushua dude who got all these rules because, you know, we don't like rules. We want to do what we want to do. Those who align themselves with the kingdom of darkness will suffer the same judgment as Ha Satan. We have two passages here. Somebody read Revelation 20, 10 and Revelation 14 to 15. And we be getting ready to close out, y'all. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they and shall be tormented day and night, forever and forever. Revelations uh, 20, 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And who, I'm sorry, 15 as well. And, who saw, and whosoever was, was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hallelujah. So for all the people who say, see, see, I, see I can't go along with all of that now. You know, you know, y'all yeah, yeah, just got too much rules in this, you know, Hebrew walk. You know, y'all got too much do's and don'ts. You know, it's not about the do's and don'ts. All you got to do is love. What will you do when the king returns? I, I want to talk to y'all as we wrap up here. What will you do when the king returns? His rulership will be universal. His rulership will be theocratic. He will judge the nations righteously. Israel will be restored. Unified worship in Jerusalem. 
Satan will be defeated and there will be a final judgment. Are you ready for the king to return? If the king is, if the king comes today, are you ready? Israel and to those who are scattered afar off, I implore you, I encourage you, I beg you, I beseech you to hearken to the voice of the king and come into this kingdom so that you can begin to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. Because if you got a problem keeping them now, you'll have a problem keeping them when the king returns. And if you don't keep these laws when the king returns, you will be punished. And if you are in a state of sleep or rest when the king's re king returns, after the, the, the Satan is defeated at the final judgment, your name will not be found written in the book and you will not be a partaker of eternity. You'll be cast into the lake of fire that burns forever and ever. Why? Because you rejected the king. You celebrate, you so-called celebrate his birthday on December 25th. Come Easter, you dress up with your eggs and your bunnies and your thing. That's what the king wants. The king said, I want to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. You can keep all of that because that has nothing to do with my kingdom. That's the kingdom of darkness. Israel, are you ready for the king to return? Are you, is your heart prepared? Are you ready for the king's return? Because I'm telling you right now, ready or not, the king is coming. You can't hide, he gonna find you. And if you're not keeping these laws, statutes and commandments, it will not fear well for you, my brothers and my sisters, my fellow pastors, bishops, and church members. It doesn't matter who you are. The king has one universal rule and he, his rulership is not up for debate. You can't vote him in and you can't vote him out. His rulership is forever. Shabbat Shalom to you each and every one. To the household of Israel, we're so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to fellowship with us on this Shabbat. Hallelujah. It was hot. It was heavy. And I hope that a lot of people had an opportunity to just go and look at some of these passages that we, we touched on. We're not making things up. Uh, we're not trying to uh, exalt ourselves above anybody. We're just here to bring out the truth. We're here to call to the house of Israel. Say, come out of her, my people. 